watching, you watching, you watching. You watching, you watching, you watching. You watching, you watching, you watching. You watching. Please welcome Electric Corbin, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right, first question. Hi, um, I'm Amelia from Twin Music. Uh, you guys entered Eurovision, but uh, you didn't get through. But I was wondering, are you ever going to try again to get into Eurovision? No, no, never, never again. Because uh, as every every funny situation that you find in your lives. Um, it's funny if you're spontaneous, if you try it for the first time, but second try is always a little bit boring and is always a little bit try hard and we don't want to be that. And uh, yeah, it was fun, it was a fun ride, but we're, we're over that. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, and... Oh yeah, I have another question. So I'll ask you our signature question. So, if you could have any band perform one of your songs, which band would it be, which song would it be, and would it be in your style or their style? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, well, I would pick Papa Roche, actually, um, but, but it's hard to choose a, a song. Uh, what do you think? Uh, in my opinion, it's always very, very funny to see uh, artists from other genres perform our songs or yeah. different songs. That's what we try all the time, you know. So Papa Roach is a brilliant band. is is also like rockish a little bit. You know what I mean? Like we we found ourselves in the same genre. I we're big fans of Papa Roach, though. Um, yeah, but, but I, I like We Got The Moves because it's very challenging. Maybe because it's something very different to what they usually do. Maybe, uh, and they absolutely need the, they need, uh, the wigs as well. Yeah. I want to see Jacoby in a fucking wig, you know? Uh, another band would be 21 Pilots, <laughs> I guess. That would be pretty awesome as well. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Blue. From my, my shirt. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from my Metal Unicorn short content on TikTok and uh, YouTube. Actually, you are a lot on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. How does it impact your audience? How does it impact the way you write music? Because basically, a lot of your clips are taken over TikTok, over Instagram. Yeah. How does it impact you? It's a very cool question, and we think um, modern music always. Uh, has to be connected to social media, to YouTube, you have to think 360 degrees, you know? Whenever we do, whenever we make new music, we, on, we don't only think about the music itself, we always think about the live situation, we think about potential videos, we think about nice social media content that we can do with it. So I think this is a requirement that hasn't been there before, and this is a challenging, as in any other business for older bands, for example, like there are the, the, the icons of our age that uh, grow older as we do, but they ha haven't, been the, uh, haven't been connected to the social media situation. So this is a very uh, important thing for us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. Hello, guys. Hey. Joe from Loud TV. Hey. How are you doing? Hey. Thanks for the weather, the German weather. Fuck Fucking that. German weather, <laughs> yeah. You're We're welcome. Sorry. Very welcome. Uh, I saw you twice in Paris. You are the very first band that I see in 30 years doing two sold out shows in Paris within four, four months, right? So it's incredible. Yeah, it is. Absolutely, it is. yeah. We're it very is. thankful. And it was a long ride. It was a long ride for us. And we know what it means to play in front of just 20 people, you know? We've been through that. It's not just a hype for us. We, we've been around for more than 12 years now. And we know how it feels to play in front of a small crowd. And that makes us appreciate that whole situation much, much more. And we yeah. could have never imagined Absolutely. To, to play in front of such a big crowd in France. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. We just need to Merci thank you guys. <laughs> 
Hello again. So actually, it's connected to the previous question. So I remember seeing you last year in the Tramado. It was like 500 person. Now it's 60,000. So it's just crazy. And also, you just actually tease on social media a new song every time we touch. Do we have, will we have the pleasure to see it tonight? Uh, no. <laughs> Um, that's a, that's no. a short uh, short answer, I know, but um, we will play it right after the release the first time, I guess, so uh, unfortunately, you guys need to wait for it. Yeah. This is uh, unfortunate a little bit, but we have so much things to do, and we ha when we started music, it was all about like doing whatever we want. There was no schedule, there was no dates and organization, but... The, the bigger all this gets, the more organization we need and there has to be a point where we play that song and uh, rehearse that song and it's, it's not makeable, not doable for plus, us. Yeah. Plus, it's all part of a promotion, so yeah. I understand. Thank you very much for the time. Hey, hey guys, this is Alex. I'm from uh, a journal in Venezuela and, uh, and Spain as well. Uh, I have a question for you regarding what you were saying about playing in uh, like small gigs and, and, and such. What do you uh, say to those young guys that are you know just starting the band and kind of discouraged because I don't know ten people went to their uh, little show and, and things like that? What do you say to them like about continuing to do music? And well, I think first of all you need to love what you do, so you need to be passionate and. Yeah, always believe in yourself. Be self-confident, believe in yourself, and uh, yeah, just do what you love with all the passion you have. Um, and I think, yeah, this is that's, one, that's one, one part. One very important thing, you, we have to be passionate, but this is what all the people on Instagram say that made it, you know? Like, the rich guys always say, oh yeah, you have to be passionate and stuff like that. It also needs a little bit of luck, of course. You have to be in the right place, the right time, you know, you, you can't measure that up very uh, very often. So it's, as Nico said, a lot of passion, but also a little bit of luck always. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, guys. Hey. Uh, I'm Leo. We're coming from Colombia, from South America. So first of all, it'll be Long fantastic way. if one day you ever hit Latin America. Yeah. I think there are people who listen to you and uh, it'll be fantastic if that actually happens. Thank you so much. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, my question will be more specifically about something that is not very usual, that is the merchandising that is not official, the bootlegs. We in Latin America, it's very difficult for us to order something. I know you have worldwide shipping and these kind of things, but sometimes we do our own merchandising. I actually have an electric cowboy hoodie that is not original, it's not from you, but we made it by ourselves because it's just far. Please do not sue us, you know, like, it's just for <laughs> us because we are fans. So how do you see that? Do you have a conflict with people making, like, you know, clothes of you that are not legal or is that okay for you guys? It's, it's a hard question because it's always when, uh, when art, and it's, uh, as in general, when art collides with economic reasons, you know, like we, we have to make a living out of our music, it's our job, but it's also our passion. So. Um, on the one side, of course, when people make money of something that we created, we want to be part of it, of course. But also, on the other side, it helps us uh, promote our music, you know? Like when you uh, have people that uh, create their own merch, it's a form of appreciation of our music on the one side. On the other side, it helps us promote our music. So it's always give and get, you know? It's always like... In Germany we say, uh, there's a saying which translates to live and let live, you know? Like, if I'm good, uh, leave others uh, alone. You better leave them alone, eh? So, we'll see. But uh, maybe you can write down your address so our lawyer can get in contact with you. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, uh, no worries. Just I didn't no make worries. a lot of money out of I'm this. just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you guys. Hope to see you live. Hi again, speaking of merchandising, you just released actually a pre-order for a new vinyl techno with uh, the flag of France. Thank you very much because I will have to spend again some money. Thank you. <laughs> but also speaking about music, at the beginning you were really into more screamo, metalcore, and now you have kind of created a new genre, basically, party metal. And when we go to your concert, it's like a big party with a lot of metalhead. How do you think about this change and this kind of concerts? Wow. Uh... Well, in my opinion, I mean, 
I joined the band three years ago, but 12 years ago, Electric Cobble was well known for being a party band. So um, I don't think that we recreated everything. I think it's more like that uh, Electric Com Cowboy found themselves again. So they kind of lost it and found it again. I think that's the... Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I would say the same. And uh, one thing that we can tell you about this situation is um, Whenever you try to be open-minded when it comes to music, you don't want to set yourself some borders, you know? And uh, I think this is one very important thing for us that we created. Uh, people expect everything and nothing from us, you know? Like when, for example, when Metallica bring out a new album, people even complain about the, uh, the kind of snare drum they use, you know what I mean? Like, they, they are very, like, in a, in a narrow gap where they can make music. Electric Cowboy, we can make whatever we want and nobody would uh, say, oh, this is shit, or they might say it's shit, but, you know, they wouldn't be surprised because it's just Electric Cowboy. And this is one very cool thing for us because it gives us the freedom that we need as artists. So we're very thankful for that. Definitely, and please stay as creative and as crazy as you, you are. You. It's thank awesome you. and we love it. So thank you very thank much. You we so try much. to, we try thank to. You. Thank you, man. Welcome. Hi, uh, I'm Hi. Jade from Metal Talk UK. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you too. I just wanted to go back because um, you guys talk about um, how you got here, but I just wanted you guys to speak a little bit about to your fans um, what's next for you guys, where you're going to go from here. Um, <laughs> yeah, as, as, a, uh, as it is festival season and we're uh, German, so it means a European band, we have our hometown located in the middle of this whole music scene you know like we can whenever we finished a weekend full of music festivals we can go back home and as we are some of us are uh, daddies uh, we love to be at home you know this used to be different we couldn't tour as much as we want but now we're daddies and we love to be with our sons and families so uh, this is like two lives that we're leading at the moment but we totally enjoy being on festivals you know like this is this is absolutely what music is about people coming together enjoying music together celebrating and having a good time and uh, even if they get wet as shit yeah wet as shit but yeah the good time hi um so you guys are coming to australia and you have a lot of sold out shows as well so what can australian fans expect from your set and can you give us any hints on your set list? Uh, well, I think I think it's when you book Electric Cowboy, you can expect always the same. Um, it's not that we like we are like making differences um, depending on the country we, we are playing in. Um, it's more like no matter where we are and where we play, we want to want to give the people the same energy, the same show on the same level yeah. every time. No matter how many people, no matter where we are. So yeah. It's, uh, so, but but you have to, uh, we have to honest uh, to have to be honest uh, with ourselves. Uh, the far you go away from home, the harder and the more expensive it is to bring all your stuff. You know, when, when we're in Europe, we can some bring some trucks and bring all our stuff with us. To Australia, it's a different situation. Uh, um, but uh, we know that the Australian audience, the crowd, is always crazy. And the more energy you get back from your fans, the better you, uh, you perform on stage. It's always like this. And uh, um, I can tell you, we, we give you all of us, like all of this. And if this isn't enough, maybe we have some like poof and pang and puff. Just some maybe. fire. Yeah. <laughs> Nico, uh, yeah. you got a, still an helmet on stage yeah, because I of have. Your, your problems. So I was wondering, how do you deal with that? Oh well, I, first of all, I'm, I don't have problems anymore. It's more like that my doctor was like, "Hey man, do yourself a favor, don't use in your monitoring again," because I had um, a very bad in ear, a uh, very bad ear infection. Um, plus, my my jaws were were, were infected as well. Um, so it was like just. Don't do it again. So, yeah, right now I have to deal with that over years. Um, and yeah, right now it's, I'm getting used to it. It's cool. I mean, yeah. I can't move the same way that I did before. Um, it's not the same, but yeah, like I said, I'm I'm used to it right now, and it's a, it's a part of me actually. Yeah, yeah, I don't see them anymore. Like you get used to it so fast, and uh, he's still pretty. Even with his old real money too. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So you will still kiss him on stage, right? Yeah, absolutely. Every time. 
the more the more the better <laughs> yeah I'm, i'm kissing him more often than my wife you know <laughs> yeah we're fathers as we said yeah all right this is the last question guys thank you Hi again. <laughs> so you already been to Elfest, I think it was a few years ago. How does it feel to come back and actually to be there on the Sunday on the main stage again and with actually not the same setup at all because now you have a lot of light, a lot of media, etc. How do you feel about it? To be honest, you get used to everything you bring on stage very fast, you know? Yeah. So we have, uh, as I just said, the more, the far away we go from home, we have to leave something at home and it's always missing. So when, whenever we don't have fire on stage, it's like, oh, where's the fire, you know? But I can tell you, um, to see the progression that takes place, it's absolutely, it's absolutely amazing for us because it shows that all the work that we have and uh, the passion that we give into our work um, um, yeah, is making an effort for our band and that the people see it, you know? It would be uh, very disappointing if you work all the years and nothing changes, you know? There are so many friends of ours that have bands, they are working uh, as much, uh, as hard as we do, but the luck situation is different, you know? <laughs> so sometimes, uh, but we're very happy to, to be in the situation to play health as this year and uh, we try to uh, push the rain away when we're on stage like maybe we have to um, put some more bass you know that the, the the rain goes up to the sky again yeah, right? well, all we need yeah. to do is certain, it, or, or certain stays up, or yeah. something yeah. <laughs> definitely thank you very much again you're welcome. you're welcome thank you everyone give a big high five thank you to the band thank you very much merci beaucoup